So let's look at another Bible subject today, very popular, and see what the Bible has to say about beauty. Beautiful. And the, and the beauty, the root form, 72 verses in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, only four verses. So let's take a look at the New Testament first, as we open our Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, 23, 27. And you'll find it quite shock what the Bible has to say about beauty. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, where they put dead men. You've seen them in cemeteries, graveyards, which indeed appear beautiful outward. And you've seen the buildings; they're they're beautiful. They're almost state of the art of of just magnificence, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness so the beauty is here's this building it looks great but in the depths of this building there are bones there is flesh there is maggots there is this grossness there is decaying quartz death and the first time it shows up in new testament you pharisees you religious people oh you're beautiful on the outside look how good you are but inside you're wicked and vile and sinners Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. If you had a red letter Bible, that's what Jesus said. Funny what the Bible said. Acts chapter 3 verse 2. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they had laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called Beautiful, capital B, who asked for alms of them that entered into the temple. In verse 10, And they knew that it was he which sat for alms, asking for money, at the beautiful gate of the temple. So I said four times in the New Testament, the first time is the Pharisees, they look beautiful on the inside, but the outside they're gross. The second and third time of the New Testament, it describes one of the gates of the temple. It's not a person. And then the last place in uh, the New Testament, Romans chapter 10, verse 15. The last place it shows up in the Bible, Romans 10, 15. And how shall they preach and set they be sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. All right, you you religious people, you are beautiful on the inside, but out, I mean outside, but you are filthy, and disgusting, and dead on the inside. Here's a man lame in his feet, sitting at the beautiful gate, asking for money. And then here's a place where preachers go out, going all the world and preach the gospel. Here are people going out evangelizing, people going with the gospel and trying to show people how to get saved. And God says, I love your beautiful feet. Now, I'm a man, male. I know that don't mean much today. And the thing is, I have not really ever seen gathered with men both lost and saved. I have never really seen a man say, oh, look how beautiful that, the feet of that woman are. Oh, that woman just has beautiful feet. And yet God says, hey, as far as the Christian, you know what's so beautiful about him? The feet that carry the gospel. Well, that's the New Testament. Genesis 29, 17. Genesis 29, 17. First time it shows up. And we got to take it all into context. Genesis 29, 17. Leah was tender-eyed. Normal. Not that much about her. But Rachel was beautiful and well favored. So the first time the Bible points to beauty is a woman. This woman will turn out to be envious of her sister. This woman will turn out to be barren by God. She will steal of her father's gods. 
But there's beauty. It's Rachel. Exodus chapter 28. He, said he didn't draw no conclusion. The, bur the verse is self-explanatory. But when we look at all the verses together, Exodus 28, 2. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, that would be the high priest, for glory and for beauty. That's the first time beauty shows up. That's a man. That's the high priest. That's the type of Jesus Christ. You know who's going to have beauty for the Christian? The Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, according to Hebrews. And what did it say? It said, Thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. Not Aaron being beauty. His garments. His garments, not the man. The garments. Verse 40. Same chapter, Exodus 28, 40. And for Aaron's sons, the priest, thou shalt make coats, thou shalt make for them girdles, first time that shows up, and bonnets, first time that shows up, and thou shalt make for them, for glory and for beauty, the priestly garbs. We're called by God of the Bible, holy and righteous. And they're not the garbs where they wear their, their tag and the fruit of the loom backwards. These are specially designed garbs get, given by God to Moses and for the people of Israel to make. Not the men, but the garments were to be holy in beauty. Uh, Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21. Verse 11. Deuteronomy 21, 11. And see is among the captives, you go into battle, go into fight, a beautiful woman, and desire her unto her, that was have her to be to be yeah, desire her to thy wife. So here's a woman again. You go into battle, you got victory, you see a woman, and she's beautiful to you. You want her to be your, your wife. So I guess for a husband to, to, to be established for a wife, there has to be beauty of the man, not the world. Listen, a woman has on her face a better beauty of a smile than, than any kind of makeup. Because a makeup can be washed off, but a smile can't. Makeup is phony. Smiles are usually not. 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16, 12. 1 Samuel 16, 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. That's David. A male. And the, the features of David were beautiful. A man after God's own heart would be recorded later. Outside of, of, of murder and uh, uh, adultery. From David, from his youth, he just had that innocency, the beauty look. I guess it could be applied to a male. The Bible has. 25.3. First Samuel 25.3. As they say, beauty is skin deep until the scalpel gets to it. 25.3 Now the name of the man was Nabal. The name of his wife was Abigail. She was a woman of good understanding. And of beautiful countenance. Like David. Like David. Here's a wicked, vile, gross man. And you got to wonder how did he end up marrying a beautiful, smart woman? I don't know. The Bible doesn't give us that. But when when we read the story of Abigail and David coming together, this picture they're cutting is the Bible says, the Holy Spirit says, they're just both beautiful. And that must have been a picture. 
David's been battled a long time. Here comes the beautiful Abigail of her countenance. Her, the countenance is what you know is what shows what is it's not it's not just skin, it's who you are. Listen, you can have an old wrinkled Christian woman that just loves the Lord, has done right by the Lord, and to the world, you know, she looks old and wrinkled, and, and God in the eyes of God and the eyes of her, the pastor of the church, and they just look to her like she's just wonderful and great. From the Lord, look, man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And that's what Samuel kept, you know, oh, this has got to be the one that God wants. No, that's not the one. Well, this has got to be, no, you stop looking on their outward appearance. And Jesus said the outward appearance, you look good, but inside the heart, David has that beauty outside, and he has that beauty inside, as Abigail does. And chapter 25, 2 Samuel 119. 2 Samuel 1.19 The beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are thy mighty fallen? That's David describing uh, King Saul and Jonathan who have died. And Jonathan and David had not a sodomite relationship. They had Conrad in arms relationship of two men who in battle, who put their lives in each other's hands to fight sword play. And when they fought against the enemy, they went fist to fist and face to face. They relied on each other. And David describes Jonathan as beauty of Israel. Well, we have seen from the Old Testament not looking yet to, to what we did in New Testament, we have seen beauty in a woman and we have seen beauty in males too. And we're not looking to compressions and we're not looking to, you know, putting on something on your skin to make you otherwise what you are. We have seen people in their natural features as their love for God and Jonathan had a love for God. Chapter 11, verse 2, 2 Samuel. Chapter 11, verse 2. And it came to pass in the eventide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful, very beautiful to look upon. Now, that's what the Holy Spirit tells us. She's washing herself. I, I would imply that there's no makeup and she's in her natural compassion of her skin, complexion. And that the fact is, she has attracted David's eyes by doing something normal. It's not Bathsheba that uh, caused David to look at. I mean, Bathsheba's not fraught in her nakedness or anything like that. The Bible tells us she's just washing herself and David's look, oh, she's beautiful. David and man, for whosoever looking upon a woman after the lust after in his heart has already committed adultery with her, though written, you know, many years afterwards. But sometimes beauty can be to the sin of mankind. For David, adultery and murder. And Jesus has warned us in the Gospels that, you know what, we're not even to be looking. David should, David should not even been there, first of all. But that, that's a whole other study. He should have been looking and he takes another look at it. Because she's beautiful. And the devil knew how to track David through the eyes. The lust of the eyes. So... 1425. 1425. But in all Israel, 
There was none to be so much praised as Absalom, a type of Antichrist, the son of David, for his beauty. From the sole of his foot even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. So, Absalom's beauty, we're told, inspired, caught the attention of Israel, like David with Bathsheba. There is no scars. There is no blemishes in, in his features to spell out beauty. And again, it's a man. Women and men in the Bible can have that beauty. And this beauty of Absalom, we're going to see in a few moments, is going to be a type of the devil. And the beauty that attracted David's eyes that brought him to sin is the same beauty that will bring a person to sin if they don't put their beauty under control. And there have been many people out there in beauty who have sinned because of their beauty. And there are many out there who are in beauty and love the Lord and want to do right. And they are chaste and they are pure and they are clean in the eyes of God. And they said no to the flesh. First Chronicles 16.29 Beauty can be good, and then beauty can be bad. Is what are you going to do with it? First Corinthians, uh, First Chronicles sixteen twenty nine. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Bring an offering, and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So who has else beauty? That we've already seen. God has beauty. Now God is not beautiful to a wicked sinful man. That doesn't want to have anything to do with God. To a man that is wicked. God is an offense. And to one that loves God. Old Testament. Loves God. New Testament. Does what God wants them to do. To the best of their ability. There is beauty. In God. I can't wait to the day that I see the Lord Jesus Christ and what moment that's going to be. And if I can say by what we read in the Bible that we have seen males in the Bible are beauty, then I can say the Lord Jesus Christ, a male, is going to be a beauty. And one day, once the judgment seat of Christ is over, and sin has been totally removed from the bride of Jesus Christ. And some will be wearing crowns and some will not be wearing crowns. At that moment, after the judgment seat of Christ has been finished, we will be in total beauty in the eyes of our beloved, Jesus Christ, who is also our beauty. Second Chronicles 3.6 2 Chronicles 3 6. And he garnished the house with precious stones and beauty, and the gold was the gold of Parvinium. Parvin. That's the temple. And the temple, the Israel Jewish house in Jerusalem for Jehovah, in the magnificence and in the splendor. And in the sparkle of gold, that's beautiful. And then yet Solomon ruined the nation for his love for other women that were beautifuler than God to him. They married outlandish women. And I guarantee some of those women are probably beautiful in Solomon and it caused his destruction. Violating the scriptures. That a king should not multiply wives to himself. And he done. A building given to God is beautiful. 
And many preachers and teachers and people today will say, Oh, our great church building is so beautiful, so, <coughs> so marvelous. In Revelation chapter 4, our church age, God says, You're miserable, you're wretched, you're miserable, you're naked. You won't be hot. You won't be cold. I'll spill you out of the house. And in the beauty of their churches, Jesus Christ is standing outside the door. Say, knocking. Say, come out. Come out. Unto me. Come out to me. Chapter 20, verse 21. Chapter 20, verse 21. Chapter 20, verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness again. God. Who ought to be the most beautiful person in a Christian's life? My wife. No. She should have beauty, we've seen. But the beautifulness... Of all your expectations is to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it's God, Jesus, the husband, the wife, then the children. And God is beautiful. And not to many. You know what the problem with pornography is? That naked body is more beautiful than Jesus Christ. What else is there? Because if you desire the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ, you would not need to be looking at nakedness and unholiness. You're taking your eyes off the Lord. <clears throat> Esther 111. Esther 111. Read what you be. Let's read chapter 1, verse 11. Bring Vastai, the queen, before the king with a crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. In the study of beauty, the king says, My wife is beautiful, bring her out. A husband say, My wife is beautiful. Now, other people may look at her like, No, she's not. In my eyes, she is. I don't know how you can see. That's okay. In my eyes, she's okay. What if he brought Vastai out before all the people? She didn't come. But what if, he, what if people say, ew. That woman. But in the eyes of her husband. Husband. It's not what everybody else thinks about your wife. It's what you think about your wife. And the problem is, again, you, you got your eyes looking to other women. And you're taking your eyes off the one that should be the beauty, the most beautiful of all beauty, besides the Lord Jesus Christ. But man looking upon a woman to lust after his heart. What are you doing? You're looking at a woman. You're taking your eyes off your wife and putting it on a woman. And you have sinned. And whatever body part you're looking at, you're considering that beautiful. Else, what would be attracting your attention? Esther 2.7 And he brought up Haddish, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful. So Esther... A wonderful type of Israel as a nation is beautiful. God's all finished with, with Israel. No, he's not. Esther, Israel, is still beautiful, though vile, though wretched, though a sinner. God will give her a new heart. God will give her the, the Spirit, the, whole, the Holy Spirit. God will clean her up. God will make her right. And God in the millennium... And in the eternal life of the new heavens and new earth and new Jerusalem, Israel will be that beautiful, spotless wife of God as the church is that beautiful, spotless bride of Jesus Christ. 
and God will be beautiful to Israel, and Jesus Christ will be beautiful to us. Glory to God. Job 40, verse 10. Job 40, verse 10. Deck thyself now with majesty and ecstasy, and reign thyself with glory and beauty. You know, this is God speaking to Job. After 40 chapters of Job and his three friends, and then Eliphaz coming in, say, Job, you're so good. Deck thyself with majesty. Deck thyself with glory. Put on the beauty without the mascara. Forget the lipstick. Forget the, the, the blush. Put on beauty like God can put on beauty. Have you ever seen the pictures of Hub, the, the Hubble spirit, spacecraft bringing us pictures of the universe that the naked eye can never see? Have you ever seen the beauty of the fishes in the deepest part of the ocean where man cannot see? Have you not seen the, the colors of the gems and of the rocks and of the rainbows, of the glorious colors and glorious things that God has made in his beauty. Go ahead, Job, do it. Come on, mister, I am a professional, I have all the doctorates, I have all the degrees, I know Bible, I know Hebrew, I know the Greek, then go ahead, make things beautiful. Without a scalpel. Because that don't make beauty, that makes imitation, that makes faith. Plastic surgeons don't make beauty. They'll make a mess when that body's laying in the coffin. Imagine if the Lord tarries many, many, many years and, and, and uh, archaeologists dig up our generation and you got falsies this, you got falsies that, and you got plastic in the coffin, you got all this mess. What were those people? What were those tribes of those people? That, they're, they're artificial. Where beauty is an actor and an actress, it's not real. God's beauty is real. Psalms 29 2. Psalms 29 2. Psalms chapter 29, verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. This again. You know what's so great about God's holiness? That God is holy. God is without sin. God is without iniquity. God is without evil. It is the beauty of God. It is the expectation one day I am going to be as holy as God is in New Jerusalem. And that's going to be a beautiful thing. Most beautiful. Psalms 49, 14. Psalms 49, 14. For this God is our God forever and ever, and we will be our guide even unto death. And that's 49, oh yeah, I read the wrong, excuse me. 49, 14. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death. Death shall feed on them. Your corruption and beauty and up sorry, and upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. Are you the most beautiful pageant, beauty pageant to be in the grave? You're going to rot, you're going to be worms, you're going to be bugs, you're going to be goo. I have not ever seen a preview of these zombie movies where one of them zombies is beautiful and, and oh, look at me. No. Not one of them Egyptian mummies have they found to be, oh, look how beautiful it is. Your beauty, if you have any beauty, is going to rot in the grave. Spend all the money to get beauty. It's going in a tomb, it's going in a coffin, or it's going to go in ashes. There you go. Next time you think about that plastic surgery, remember, it's going to lay in a grave one day. 
funny how people are making fun of all these plastic bottles. Why don't you make fun of plastic faces? Why don't you make fun of plastic boobs? As much as the water bottles will not decay, neither will the body parts decay. <clears throat> Psalms 50 verse 2. Al Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. That's the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennial kingdom on the throne of David, with David the Prince, with all Israel before him. The millennial will be beautiful. The curse will be removed except for the serpent and Jesus Christ's magnificence. It won't be beautiful for those in hell. It ain't beautiful for Satan. It's not beautiful for the Antichrist. They're in the lake of fire. But all those that love God and want to do right and are of His people, beauty. And it didn't cost us anything. It didn't cost us anything. 90 verse 17. 90 verse 17. Ninety verse seventeen. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. How's that? When you talk to an unsaved man, there's no beauty of God. When you talk to a Christian, how do you know a person is a Christian? When they describe the beauty and elegance of their God, their Savior. The beauty of God's name is not to be a cuss. The beauty of God is not a religion. You don't replace the beauty of God in Jesus Christ with Mary. She has no beauty right now. She's been decaying over the years. You pop her out of the grave and she's not beautiful. But Jesus Christ, though he's been dead, though he's been buried, though he has risen from the grave, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, he has died, he's been resurrected, and he's still yet beautiful. Except for the people of iniquity. 96.6 96.6 Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Where is that? Heaven. Heaven is the ultimate, greatest, beautiful place. And wait till you get to New Jerusalem. When we get a new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. And when you read about that in Revelation 21 and 22, the splendor, the magnificence, and all in holiness, again, without sin. We got to get a new body with new eyeballs because we would bust our eyeballs. The splendor on that beauty without lust, without pornography, without sin, without iniquity. The bride of Jesus, the bride of God, Israel. Wonderful and great. 149.4, I think. 149.409. Miserable handwriting I have. One day I'll have beautiful handwriting. Four. One forty nine four. And the people for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. One day, our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. For by faith, for by grace are we saved through faith. And not of ourselves, it's the gift of God. The salvation I have that is of God's is going to make me beautiful one day. How? I'm going to get a brand new body. I'm going to get a body that will never sin. I will have neither iniquity. I will never do any error. I will never do any sins before God my Savior, before Jesus Christ in New Jerusalem. I will be in beauty. You look at me right now, you say, man, you look like a biker. You look like a bum. Yeah, one day I'm going to look like Jesus. I'm going to look like Jesus. 
Proverbs 6.25. Proverbs 6.25. Proverbs 6.25. Some people look at me right now and say, oh, oh you look ugly. Hey, that's what you think. I like how I look. My wife likes how I look. It's not up to you. Why is it when we judge beauty, we judge, you know, everybody has their own different interpretation of beauty. God's beauty is sinless perfection through Him, through Jesus Christ. Proverbs 6.25 Lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Now that's an evil woman, verse 24. Solomon, who has the great prospect of marrying women and fallen in sin by women, he says, as far as that, that evil woman, you know what my dad told me? Now, I'm not saying that she was evil, but, you know, from what my dad did, from what I've done, keep your eyes off the women. David looked upon Bathsheba, oh, she's beautiful. Solomon's looked at many women, oh, they're beautiful. And both of them sin. And Jesus comes along later and says, If thou looketh upon a woman, if thou looketh upon a woman, if thou looketh upon a woman, the lust that there in your heart. What is the Bible context for the man to keep your eyes off them beautiful women? The context is, there are beautiful women out there. You need to keep your eyes off them. Women. Women. There are beautiful men out there. Keep your eyes off them. So what we've studied so far, we're looking at both sexes, male and female. It can cause you to sin, beauty. You can make yourself beauty in sin. You can keep your beauty and you can be precious in the sight of God and be a clean, chaste vessel for God and be beautiful as anything. We didn't read anywhere where Abigail sinned or Abigail did wrong, did we? Rachel, she sinned. She was beautiful. Abigail, she is no... Re I mean, she, we're all in sin come short of the glory of God. As far as what the Holy Spirit has told us, she's beautiful and she did right. You can turn your beauty into the devil or you can turn your beauty into God. Proverbs. 2029. Now I'm telling you, parents, if you have a child who's beautiful, truly beautiful, you gotta watch it. You gotta train them up in the Bible. You gotta train them up in the Lord. You gotta pray for them children. Because the devil will thirst and lust after their beauty to churn it for him and churn it away from God. Proverbs 20, 29. The glory of the young man is their strength. And the beauty of old man is their gray head. Age can be a beauty when it's used properly for the Lord. When you grow up in the Bible, you have started your life with a new birth. And you have started from the... From the infancy milk of the word of God. And you've grown to strong milk. I mean strong meat. Excuse me. You have grown yourself up as a Christian. From an infant to a young man in the Lord. And you've done it right. You've done all you possibly can for the Lord. And you have aged over the years as a Christian. I have fought the good fight. I have, I have finished my course. And when the beauty of you is. You've done it for the Lord. When the gray hairs come. Because. People had conflict with you in the Word. Not you having conflict with the Word through people. Hey, it's remarkable to say, I lived in old age because God has given me life and I haven't done anything stupid. Some people die early because they do stupid things. Famous last words of idiots. Hey, watch this. Then there's no beauty when you die young of stupidity. When you're involved in alcohol, tobacco, and illegal drugs, you're, there's no beauty. 
Look at the before and after pictures of people with illegal drugs. They start off good and they end up there. They're just, just covered with scars and warts and all kinds of wrinkles and problems. In the realm of alcohol, see, in the realm of tobacco, in the realm of illegal drugs, there is no beauty. It's wickedness, vile. Proverbs 20, uh, 31. Proverbs 31. Verse 30. Proverbs 31, 30. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. God, look at the mascara I put on. Look at all the makeup. I, took, I know one woman took an hour and a half to put her makeup on every morning. That woman had a suitcase. Of all her, her blushes and her whatever, stuff like that. I, I told her one time I was going to buy her one, one of them putty machines. I harassed that woman. All that stuff to build herself up. And at the end of the day, she'll take it all off. Favors the people and beauty is vain. When a man falls in a woman that paints her face, he, he marries her, he takes her off to the honeymoon suite, and in the honeymoon suite, they, they do their thing, in the morning, she comes out of the bathroom, Ah! Who are you? I'm your wife, I just don't have my face on. I'll put it back on. Makeup deceives a man. That's not what you look like. Jezebel paint her face. Churches paint faces. You deceivers. You liars. Favors the secret. Beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. How's that for the Holy Spirit? How's that for recording in the Holy Bible? You fear the Lord, God says, that's praise. I enjoy a woman as ugly as she could be. If she loves me and does right, there she is. She'll be a one that wears a crown. Wear a crown. Wear a crown. A bright and shiny crown. Well, what about me and my beauty? Then love God. I love the world. Then rot as the worm dieth not. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. He has made everything beautiful in his time. That's, we've already talked about that. God has made beautiful things in his time. Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. There it is. It's hiding on me. Ezekiel 16, verse 15. But thou didst trust in thy own beauty and playest the harlot because of thy own. You're, you're popular, you're renowned. People know your name, people has your pictures. And Pours out thy fornication on everyone that passes by. You love your beauty more than you love God. You're a fornicator. You're wicked. Chapter 27, verse 3. Chapter 27, verse 3. Ezekiel. And say unto Tyrus, O thou that art situated, placed, Location at the entry of the sea, which are are a merchant of the people of many isles. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, thou hast said, this is what Tyrus said, I am perfect beauty. I am perfect beauty. Verse 4. Thy borders are the midst of the sea, and thy builders have perfected thy beauty. 28, chapter 28, 
chapter 28, verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, chapter 27. What we just read in 27. 28, 12. Son of man, take up the lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Okay, ready? Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Edom, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the ark, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets, of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that, that covereth. That's the devil, my friend. I have set thee so. Thou was on the holy mount of God. That's the devil. The devil, God describes the Holy Spirit as perfect in beauty. Verse 17. Same chapter. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. So anybody who has beauty and has given it to the world and has given it to flesh, has given it to fornication, has given it to adultery, you have turned your beauty against God. You are in the same realm of Satan, Lucifer, the devil. We're all three under one. Lucifer, according to the Bible at one time, and probably still is, is most beautiful. And he turned it into iniquity. He turned it into sin because his pride was, look how beautiful I am. Absalom. <coughs> Absalom. And all the people in the world have taken their beauty and given it over to the world and to the devil. You have followed the footprints of the devil. What we just read. What we just read, that was in Edom. That was the anointed cherub. That is Lucifer. He is fallen as the devil and Satan. And God has described him as in beauty. In beauty. Zechariah 11. Zechariah 11. So you can use your beauty for wicked and for sin and for iniquity like the devil. And be devil like. Zechariah 11. Or you can take your beauty and use it for the Lord Jesus Christ like Jesus did. You can be for the devil or you can be for Jesus. And when you paint yourself, you're deceiving. Guess who deceives? When you make yourself be who you're not, that's a liar. Guess who the liar is? Zechariah 11, verse 7. I'm going to step right on out, at least for my family. It's a sin to put any makeup on. It's a sin. Now, your family, what you do, that's between you and God. My house is a sin. Zechariah 11, verse 7. Can you ever imagine Jesus putting makeup on? Hold on. <laughs> let, me, let me paint my, my God body. And I will feed the flock of the slaughter. Even you, O poor the flock. And I took unto me two staves. One I called Beauty, capital B, and the other I called Bands. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10. I took my staff, even Beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant with I had made with all the people. Jesus Christ suffered and died. Jesus' beauty was marred by a cat and nine tail. Jesus' beauty was marred by the fists of those soldiers. Jesus' beauty was marred by the nail prints. The beauty of Jesus was marred by the throne. I mean, by the thorns placed upon his brow. Isaiah 3. Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. It shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell there shall be a stink instead of a girdle rent instead of a girl rent instead of a, a well set hair baldness instead of a stomacher that's an ornament a i'm trying to read it again. 
I marked my Bible to the two tail of sacrifice. A burning instead of beauty. A burning instead of beauty. You know what the devil's going to end up one day? He's end up burning in the lake of fire. And we've read he was the most beautiful one. He is the beautiful one. And he ends up in the flames. You know, a car accident, a fireplace, a campfire can ruin your beauty. And it can turn the faces of those that loved your beauty and did not love you. Whereas if you have beauty and you have a sweetheart and a fire has destroyed or a car accident has destroyed your face. And they still love you as you are. That's beauty that's going skin deep. Not painted skin. God can destroy beauty. And he will. Lucifer. Satan. And the devil. In the lake of fire that burns forever. And many. I'm going to say millions. Of those that have taken their beauty and used it for the world. Into the lake of fire that burns forever. Chapter 4 verse 2. Chapter 4, verse 2. And he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, this is Israel, and planted it with the choicest vine, built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein, and looked at that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. That's Israel. That's Israel. And I don't see beauty there. And you're saying, Sally, chapter 4, verse 2, not 5. Okay. <laughs> chapter 4, verse 2. I read chapter. Well, that was Israel, chapter 5. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful, Jesus. And the glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. The millennium. The millennium will be a rest for the Jews. No more Antichrist. No more United Nations trying to get rid of them. No more the Arabians trying to get rid of them. No more the PLO trying to get rid of them. No more the Saudi Arabians trying to get rid of them. No more America turning their backs on them. No more England giving them Jordan. It'll be the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Kings, the Lord of Lords. Here is Jesus, the King of Nazareth. It'll be beauty one day for the Jews. Chapter 13, verse 9. Chapter 13, verse 9. Maybe I'll get the right verse on this one. We all make mistakes. Behold, the day the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. Second advent. Lay the land desolate. Why am I in the wrong place again? 13, 19. I'll read 13, 9. Ah, please forgive me. The Babylon, the glory of the kingdom, the beauty of the Chaldees. Where is it today? Where is the beauty of the Chaldees? Where is the beauty of Babylon? It's destroyed. What is the beauty of the world of that time? It's been fought over by armies. It's no longer standing. As your beauty in the world won't stand, like the beautiful cities and the beautiful country and the beautiful people of the devil and of the world, they will not stand any longer. Only that, the beauty that rests in God, in Jesus Christ. 28.11, try this again. I don't know why I keep reading the wrong verses. 28.1 Woe unto the crown of pride. That's not good. To the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower. You want to get rid of your beauty real quick? Get into alcohol. You want to get rid of your beautiness? Get into pride. Because pride and drunkenness is a sin. It's a sin against God. Alcohol will ruin your life. Body. 
pride is a major sin of the Bible. It will ruin you. Isaiah 28, 5. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and a, a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, and the remnant of the children of Israel who survived the tribulation period and the great tribulation period and that place that God has prepared for them when Jesus mounts up on that horse and said, Pride, let's go get him. Oh, the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ for those Jews. He's come. Here is our Messiah. Oh, heaven will rejoice. The Jew has now seen the beauty in their Messiah, Jesus Christ. God will be pleased. Jesus will be pleased. The church will be pleased. The angels will be pleased. And the devil and his armies and his beauty will be cast off into prison for a thousand years. And the mark of the beast and the image of the beast and the antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire that burneth forever. And then the devil is least loose for a season and he's cast off in the lake of fire that beautiful cherubim that most beautiful one that fell in the love of his pride goes off into the lake of fire and the nation of israel is made right beauty through the lord jesus christ beauty for the church beauty for the nation of israel and beauty of god beauty i ain't talking about hollywood 33.17 Isaiah 33.17 And this video is going to end real quick. So let's go to Isaiah 53 before it ends. Isaiah 53.2. let we got to get this one. Where the video ends. Isaiah 53.2 Look at 52.7 and 33.17 of Isaiah. Video is coming near and Isaiah 53.2 About the Lord Jesus Christ. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant as a root of a dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. There was no beauty of the, Jesus at the first advent. But when he comes for his bride, oh, the beauty of the church. There he is in the clouds. There he is. Now when he came the first time, not many received him. Twelve men and a few women walked with him faithfully. At his death of his cross, his mother and one of the disciples was there. The world does not think Jesus Christ, the devil does not think Jesus Christ is beautiful. But those that are saved, those that are of God, the beauty yet to come is in the Lord Jesus Christ. God forever. New Jerusalem, beauty. New heavens, beautiful. The new earth motivate beauty with the one the beautiful one the sheriff is cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever 